Greetings from Kyiv, Ukraine. If you have never seen a black Russian before, look at one very well. <laughs> Everybody wonders, are you coming from Kyiv, from Russia, Ukraine? Why are you black? Where can we pray? <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we appreciate you this morning. We thank you for your awesome presence. Thank you for the words of life that you have sent us today. Father, we want you to keep on speaking to us. Father, we don't just want to be entertained. And we don't just even want to be challenged. Now, Spirit of God, we pray that you will come over across to us in a powerful way such that we will be changed in your presence this week. We pray that you will send us your word because your word is life. We pray that like your word you said is like a hammer that bear and that tears in pieces every hindrances and obstacles. So we release your word as a hammer to destroy everything that is standing on our way to make progress in the things of the kingdom. We pray that you will send your word to us today so that it will be like a deal from heaven so that it will come over us and refresh in us as ministers of God that we might be able to go with new strength to do more for you. Now, Father, we realize that one billion souls and 500 million church, five million churches is no joke. So we say it's not by might, it's not by power. So we ask you today to hook us up to your grace that this week we will be filled with the divine power and anointing from the presence of God that we might be able to go out as leaders and be able to affect our world in such a way that one billion souls and five million churches will not be a problem just to us as it is to you speak O oh Lord this morning that it will not receive from flesh and blood that your spirit will be speaking to us Thank you, Lord, that you will do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Now, the topic I'm giving is called Defining Moment in a Leader's Life. Now, first of all, I would like us to know that leaders, like all men, also have needs, desires, dreams, and aspirations. So, like all men, leaders have dreams and wishes that they have and that bring them satisfaction and fulfillment so leaders like all other people have defining moments they have defining moments that make their day they have events and occasions that they're looking up towards and we as leaders today let's ask ourselves what is it that you will call a defining moment in your life not just in your ministry but in your life what are those moments that you will think yeah these are the kind of moments that i'm living for i thought about this topic and i thought about myself and i feel that as a leader that is you know in the kingdom of god that is trying to make a difference in the kingdom that maybe my moments might also be uh similar to yours and i want to give us five defining moments in my life that i think make my day and that i believe should be some of the most important moments in the lives of leaders number one ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says be ye followers of christ as their children or it could say be ye imitators of christ of god as their children now i believe that one of the most fulfilling moments in the life of the leader is when he is able to successfully model his life after the ultimate and greatest leader of all jesus so if a leader is able in his life in his personal life not the public life now we're not talking about when you're on stage but when you know in within yourself that i am following him I, my life is being modeled after him i am walking right when you know you're walking right when you know you are living just for him and you are 
modeling yourself your character just after him i mean in within yourself you are most fulfilled so that is what i would say is one of the most defining moments in my personal life because when you look at uh uh paul i like paul in first corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 to 2 he was t- telling us that we should follow he was encouraging his followers that you should follow me as i follow christ he was very confident about it about his work you know as a leader we must have a model if we are the ultimate leader if we are the ultimate all by ourselves you don't have anybody that you are copying you don't have anybody that you are aspiring to be like <laughs> you will soon degenerate and you will not have anything to show your people so as leaders we should always have a model before us we should have a prototype and we know the bible is a prototype to us the prototype of god's life and the prototype of christ's life so for me personally the, i read the bible only for two reasons and i think as leaders this should be the basic reasons why we read the bible you see most of the time as leaders sometimes we will read the bible just to be able to preach to others but what are the the real reasons why we, we are giving the bible i think number one we are giving the bible so that we might be able to see and know god through it so when i read the bible i ask myself one question the first question is what does this passage tell me about him that question helps me to discover and to know my master for example if i see god uh, uh let's say feeding five thousand or the hungry that tells me something about god okay that means god is not indifferent to the plight of men that's a point so that is helping me to know god but the second question that we are all supposed to be asking ourselves when we read the bible is on one hand what does this passage tell me about god it happens to know god on the other hand how does this what does this passage tell me about myself that question is directed directed for me to know to discover myself in god so for example if god is feeding people who are hungry that means i because i am god carrier i am carrying god I'm, i want to discover god in myself how does god want me i mean how does god want himself to be in me how does god want to act through me because you know god the only god people are going to see is me and because he's going to he doesn't have flesh he doesn't have hands he doesn't have legs so if people are going to see god as, as a servant of god i read the bible to discover god who he is and to discover who he wants to be in me who he is and who he would like to be in me so if when i read the passage that jesus fed the hungry i say what does that tell me about god god cannot be indifferent to human needs now what does that tell me about god about myself it means god wants me to never be indifferent to other people's needs so for example when i see jesus healing the woman that was bent over because of the infirmity and the disciples were saying oh don't touch him he said no the pharisees and he was telling them this lady that has been born all these years don't you wish that she would be loosed that tells me something about god god doesn't like bondage all right he loses people who are in bondage but that is not all the bible is not giving for to us just for us to know who god is theoretically and be able to talk about him no as leaders is the bible is given to us as a model as a prototype of who we are supposed to be so that we might be imitators of god so when i see him losing that lady okay he doesn't want anybody to be in bondage and he tells me something okay god wants me to be a deliverer in my world so is anybody in bondage when i cross across them when i come across them i am their liberty i am their li- deliverer so the reason so that's why paul was able to say be imitators of god be followers of god so as leaders we must have an example that we follow 
so when we are successfully following god and imitating him then that is a defining and most exciting moment in our lives because you know that god knows that you are living right number two the second point that i would like to give to us today is from third book of john third john verse four it says i have no greater joy than to hear my children walk in the truth that's what it says in third john for verse four paul i mean john is writing that he has no greater joy than to see and to hear his children walking in the truth the second or another great moment in a leader's life is what i will uh, classify to be when a leader is reproducing himself he is most satisfied and most fulfilled when a leader is able to reproduce himself now i'm not talking about when a leader has people coming to his church because a lot of the churches that we have these days is all about people moving from other people's church to our churches so just the way they came that is the way we lose them because and definitely if you like it or not another church will open up next time and maybe and they will still move on but the greatest joy of a pastor is not 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 just when he has people in coming to his church but the ability to be able to reproduce people in your spirit according to your vision not necessarily getting them born again in your church but really but the ability to be able to give birth to your spirit in them the ability to be able for you to be able to bond them in the gospel give birth to them through the gospel that is what really creates in them the kind of christian that you want to see so and um, for that to happen you've got to labor on them you've got to work on them you've got to uh put yourself in them and be able uh walk a lot on them i would like us to read psalm 127 psalm 127 verses 3 and 5. you see when god decides to honor a man he gives the man sons or children not members not just followers but sons and we all know that a, su a success without a successor is a failure so children are the people that really succeed you people that are really able to multiply you and carry your vision forward one psalm 127 verses 3 to 5 it says behold children are an heritage of the lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward now when the favor of god comes upon you it gives you children because that is when you have an inheritance you see many people have members but they don't have children so they don't have inheritance that is as long as he's disappeared all his work all his labor disappears together with with him because he doesn't have is not graced with an inheritance so god is saying children are inheritance and not just inheritance children are also a reward from god now it does not just matter for us to serve god it matters for god himself to reward you and when god begins to reward you he gives you men after your spirit that succeed you and carry you over for the, for the for the generations to come and the reason why we are all gathered here to, is because one man lived two thousand years ago Amen. but because of the grace because god gave jesus inheritance and rewarded him it doesn't matter what happened in the history of the church it doesn't matter what happened with the catholic church god kept on raising men that stand for the truth and for god now it says as arrows in the hands of the mighty so are children of the youth man when they, when god gives you successors and children in faith you become a mighty man listen friends as leaders for us to be fulfilled one of the most defining things in our life and one of the most fulfilling thing we could ever do is to raise up children after our spirit because that is what really makes you to be mighty because the greater you are is not as much as you have done but how much 
are able to be done by your followers and your children so that's why it says here that it's like a, an arrow in the hand of the mighty you become a mighty man when you raise children amazing grace and he says happy is the man that has his cure full of them they shall not be ashamed but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate you are full of boldness you are full of grace when you are full of children and in isaiah chapter 8 verse 18 it says hi and these children that the lord has given unto me we are for signs and wonders in israel that is he's saying when god gives to children your children will go beyond you and do more signs more wonders than you could ever do I am the children that the Lord has given unto me. We are not mere men. We are not mean people. We are for signs and wonders. We are for shaking and reconstruction. We are shaking and rebuilding the world. That is what children do for you. So the number two defining moment in the life of a believer is when he's able to reproduce himself. Number three. The number three thing I would think is the most defining moment in the life of a pastor and of a leader is when a leader uh, when a leader's eyes are uh, how do you say are opened when a leader is able to see where to go how to go and how to lead god's people continuously you know when we you, you know where to go to like jesus said in john chapter 5 verse 19 that the son cannot do anything by himself apart from those things he sees the father does you see all of us are limited until we see the father does something so as leaders even jesus could not do much until he sees the father that's why he always separated himself and went to the mountain for me personally whenever i hear from god when I had it, when I hear a word and when I get a message from God, I am as bold as a lion. All right, I am an, I am unstoppable. I know nothing will stop me, and I know I will be effective. But when God has not spoken, I am as weak and powerless as a, as a chicken. And I think all of us are the same. So, it, 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 as a leader, one of the most defining moments in our life should be the ability to be able to keep seen God in action in Matthew you know, chapter 6 verses 22 to 23 he said if your eyes is bad if your eyes is blind you cannot your, your whole body is blind your whole vision is spoiled and he said don't be like the Pharisees who are blind leaders and leading other leaders. so for me I pay so much attention to this to the extent that I take time out of my busy schedule every month to be with God for a week every single month it doesn't matter what is happening around me I take a week off no wife no family that week nothing no church no office no preaching just to be alone with God and why do I need to do that without him I'm powerless I need to see him I need to hear him so as soon as when that one week with God tells me and does accomplishes more in my life and ministry than 10 years of struggling let's as leaders find time to always find god hear him so that we might not just beat about the bush and so that we are just not just uh, punch the ear so that we might hit the target each time number four the, uh, define, another defining moment in the life of a leader as leaders we will all agree to this is that real leaders and in fact all leaders are pragmatic people we are all pragmatic people we all want to see results leaders would like to see, see results we don't just want to walk 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 and not see why we are laboring Jesus himself said in John uh, chapter 10 verse 38 it says if you don't believe me believe the works that i do it's results and uh, paul in uh, in romans 15 verses 18 to 20 was telling them i will not be boasting of what the lord has not done through me you know then he began to illuminate illuminate and tell them what god has done through him now why do we need results in ministry because when you 
it when you labor and you see the fruit of your labor it shows that you are not just wasting your time we are not wasting your life and it comforts you when the tough gets when the going gets tougher like for example i am pastoring the ukraine it's it's not it's not it, it has not always been as friendly as this the kgb tried to destroy me many times there was a time when every day the newspapers were writing horrible stuff about me they wanted to deport me from the country a lot of trials all of us have faced challenges anyway i don't want to go into mine but when you see the results of your ministry it comforts you from your challenges so for example when i people say why do you live in ukraine in russia why why you can't why why russia but because of the result that i see now i don't want to be anywhere else so results are very important for us as leaders we should know we, we should not just be engaged in activities let's be result oriented you know the most important thing is not just that you are doing something many people are only busy but they don't have anything to show for their business but god doesn't want us to just be in ministry being busy doing some things but he wants to be able to for you to be able to show something for your activities and that strengthens you to be able to do even more and the last point that i would like to make is that the most def uh, another defining moment in the life of the pastor i mean or a leader is when he knows within himself that he is walking in peace especially peace in his family i don't care how gifted you are personally i have a, i have a policy in our family if my wife is not smiling if she's not happy if she's not troubled or disturbed about anything i'm going nowhere no preaching that day no, i am not leaving the house until i see her beaming out of laughter and joy why because I mean, what is the essence what, where am i who am i going to impress if i cannot impress the closest person to me it's not worth it and you know uh, and the bible tells us in first peter chapter 3 verse 7 that uh if you don't have the right relationship with your wife that you could be hindered in prayer so i don't want to preach i don't want to go out i don't want to be anybody if my wife is not the most happy if not is not the happiest person in the world so peace in at home is crucial to uh to to, to the effectiveness of a leader peace at home number two peace with your neighbors you know as leaders we will have people who, mid, who misunderstand us all the time in our cities in our church in our congregation all the time you will see people read meaning into your actions without knowing your motivation and people will hurt you you know that's why jesus told us in matthew chapter 5 verses 43 to 47 that love your enemies do good to them that that hate you uh, uh, uh you know just you know go and bless them that cost you why god is not saying those people are good enough to deserve all those things but god wants you to maintain your peace when jesus is telling us that he's more particular about our peace the peace of our mind so keep your peace for example right now by the grace of god i can say i can't remember there is nobody on the surface of the earth that i don't like that i hate or that i'm angry with i will not go to sleep until i settle with everybody you know and that peace gives you the strength and the ability to even you know you know to just walk in you know you are ready to meet god at any time when you can walk in peace with man with your family and that gives you peace with yourself within yourself and of course that secures for you peace with god so the five points that i made that are the most defining moments in the life of a leader are number one a leader is most fulfilled when he successfully models his life after the ultimate and greatest leader when he reads the bible not just to teach other people when he reads the bible to discover god 
and to discover not just who God is but to discover who God wants to be in him so that he might be God's imitator and God's carrier on the earth number two the most also another, another defining moment in the life of a leader is when he is able to reproduce after himself when God wants to bless a man when God wants to have and show mercy and favor on a man he blesses him with children after his own spirit because children are an inheritance and a reward from the Lord number three one of the most fulfilling thing in the life of a leader is when a leader knows where he's going when his eyes are kept open when he's always in tune with God when he knows exactly what to do how to do it like for example by the grace of God I know exactly what I'm to do in the next 25 years I see from there here and because of what I see ahead it enables me to act and to know what to do today the ability to see nothing like it that even Jesus is not able to do much if he's not seeing the father do it he said the son will not be able to do anything until he sees the father what he sees the father do is only what he can do number four leaders are pragmatic we should be result oriented instead of activity oriented it's not the most important thing it's not just to be busy but it's more important to have something to show for your business <laughs> pastors are always busy but I wrote a book that is called pastoring without tears no tears don't cry pastoring without tears you don't need to be so busy people ask me all the time you have 25,000 people in your church how do you cope why are you not is it not tough are you, how do you find time I said I am freer today than I was when I had 100 people in my church so we should learn to be result oriented instead of activity oriented and the last point which I think is a defining moment in a leader's life is for him to maintain peace at all time no matter the cost maintain peace in your family first of all then with your neighbor with everybody that secures you peace with yourself and with God God bless you